Corey's Been Dead for an Hour is the ninth episode of the fourth season of Two and a Half Men. This is directed by Gary Harvison. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. In general, it's a good episode. We have some really great performances. But it is very, very slow in places. It starts off at the movie theatre. Jake is asking for a lot of food. Alan goes to pay. Whoopsies, he forgot his wallet, so Charlie has to pay. Charlie then, begrudgingly, asks Alan to double date with him as his date has a friend and she wants to double date with somebody. So we are at the restaurant, really nice location, and things seem to be going really well. Alan's date wants to have a crazy night. Charlie suggests switching dates, and his date is really keen with that idea. So they're going to do that after they've paid the bill. As soon as Alan hears the words, he scurries off to the bathroom and... Charlie is not letting him get away with it this time, so he follows Alan into the bathroom. Alan spends a long time trying to pee, and then, oh dear, he needs to go and sit on the toilet, so Charlie does exactly the same thing. He is determined to not leave that bathroom before Alan. And honestly, it's very slow. That's kind of the point. They're moving very slowly. Alan's trying to delay as much time as possible with the hope that Charlie will give up and leave and pay. But Charlie is basically copying everything Alan's doing and at Alan's slow pace. So it is a little slower than I would like, but I do understand why it's as slow as it is. I think maybe it went on for longer than it should have done, but there was one bit that I really, really liked. I'll talk about that in a second, but first of all, we cut to Jake, which does help to break up that scene. Jake is watching a horror film and Rose comes over and scares him. The popcorn goes everywhere. It's quite a nice scene. Also, Jake is home on his own. And I mentioned, I think in the previous discussion, that this season is really showing us that Jake is growing up in a lot of ways with the things he's talking about, the things he's allowed to do, being home alone, one of them. It's just interesting to see things they're doing with the character now that he's getting a little bit older. We're then back to the bathroom and they start to talk about liquid soap. And then Alan just says, how funny is Berta? Which I have to admit took me by surprise. It was a very random thing to say. Then they're very slowly drying their hands. And then we have this beautiful moment where it looks like for about a second, Alan is about to leave the room. Charlie won. No, no, no. He just lunges forward to press the button on the hand dryer. <laughs> it was beautifully executed. Very, very well done. Eventually, they leave. Somebody else paid for the check and left with the women. Definitely not how Charlie expected the evening to go. They're then at home, they're still arguing. Alan goes into his bathroom and tells Charlie he's being irrational. So Charlie shows him what irrational is and really shakes the dresser. And his lamp, the lamp that Charlie owns, falls to the floor. And he picks it up and he notices there's a hole in the butt. And in that hole is Alan's secret stash of money. And Charlie took the stash, returned the lamp, and I could not wait to see how Alan reacted I've seen this episode before, but I was really excited too. I couldn't remember what happened and I was excited to see how it played out. We then cut to sometime later and Gordon is delivering the pizza. Alan says that he'll pay. He goes to the room, obviously to go into his money stash. Charlie gives Gordon the money out of the wad that he took from Alan's lamp. And all we hear is Alan screaming, which is very funny. Very, very well done. And what I, I didn't love, and we could have maybe lost some of the bathroom time to give us this time, I wish they'd played it out a little longer with Alan wondering where the money is, trying to pretend he's not looking for a secret stash of $5,000. And I think they could have done a bit more with it and they could have taken that time from the bathroom scene. So... That's what I would have preferred, but what we got was pretty good. And Alan explains the money is for old Alan, because he doesn't know what his future holds. He's never had financial security, and he's putting it away whenever customers pay in cash, which is uh, a little bit dodgy if he's not paying tax on that. But nevertheless, that's where this money has come from. And Charlie tells him to spend the money. And for a second, Alan is thinking about this, because Charlie's implying that he, Alan will always have a, a room in his house. So even if he's old and has no money and no one to care for him, he can stay with Charlie. And as soon as Alan asks for confirmation of that, Charlie throws the money back at him and definitely thinks that saving money so he can care for himself is a better option than him living with him forever. And then we end with 
old Alan working at the movie theater with Charlie and a younger woman going to the movie theater and Alan wakes up from the dream. Not a bad way to end things. It's a generally a good episode, but I do feel like the pacing isn't great. As I said, I understand why the bathroom scene is really slow, but I think we could have maybe shortened it. Not quickened up the pace, but just shortened it a little bit. And then, as I said, I would have liked to have seen Alan fretting a bit more about the missing money for just a couple of minutes longer. But that aside, I still think Corey's been dead for an hour is a decent episode of Two and a Half Men.